Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Japanese Chicken Meatballs. That's right, today we are making chicken meatballs from scratch and I think it's going to be a lot easier than you might be thinking. See, there's no meat grinder required for this process. In fact, if you've got a food processor at home, you can make your chicken meatballs from scratch super quick and easy. You could even take the time to do it by hand if you had enough patience and time. But the meatballs that we're doing today are kind of Japanese inspired after the dish sukune, which is chicken meatballs threaded onto skewers cooked on the barbecue. And that's what we're doing. Let's put together these meatballs. Now we've got a little bit of uh, prep work to do here, putting these meatballs together. We're gonna start with our aromatics. So I've got a spring onion here. You can use just a scallions, green onions, or even a white onion, but the white part, we wanna grate it down. So we're actually going to include that in the meatball. And then the tops, or the green parts, they're not gonna get cooked. They're gonna be served uh, kind of as a garnish at the very end here. So we'll just do sort of a thin slice on these. We can set them aside for later. And next we've got our garlic and our ginger. Now this is all gonna go into the food processor so I don't have to be too particular about how we break it down. I just wanna get a rough chop on that garlic. And then of course we gotta get the skin off the ginger. And we'll probably grate that down as well, just because it's a little bit easier. I'm going to do that on the microplane, just because it's a little bit easier to break it down. We'll look for about a teaspoon of ginger. And then we've got ourselves a lime here. I'm going to take the zest off the lime. We're going to work that into the meatball, and we'll save some of that juice for later. If you guys aren't messing with zest yet, go get yourself one of these microplanes, because it's a tool I use all the time in the kitchen. And when it comes to zesting, this is the easiest way to do it. This zest has such a powerful punch of aroma. Uh, it's a great way to really insert whatever citrus flavor you're looking for into whatever recipe you're producing. Now moving on to the chicken itself. We're using chicken thighs today, boneless, skinless. Uh, this is, for me, the best cut of chicken to use for meatballs because of the, that fatty, velvety texture that it has. Uh, I'm just check in to see if I've got any hard bits stuck on here. Sometimes you get a joint left behind, not finding anything. So these just need a rough chop. We're gonna let the food processor do most of the work here. It's actually gonna break this down fine enough to make meatballs out of it. And then very quickly also give it kind of its primary bind that you do, that you go through the process of doing uh, agitating to make it achieved that sausage texture, that kind of tacky, sticky texture. So traditionally, the sukune meatball would be made uh, by hand because that's what that, that word sukune actually is derived from, is from basically mixing this by hand. But uh, we have modern appliances to help us. So into the Vitamix with our chicken, add all of those fresh aromatics, our onion, garlic, ginger, lime zest. And from there, we're gonna add a little bit of binder. We've got a half cup of panko breadcrumbs. It's gonna help soak up some of that moisture and hold a lot of that flavor. And we're gonna throw in a tablespoon of everything bagel seasoning, which might seem kind of weird, but if you think about it, you got sesame seeds, you got garlic, you got onion, all things that go great. Also got some Japanese barbecue sauce, the bachan's yuzu. So this has got a bright citrusy flavor. We're gonna do one tablespoon of that. And then finally, a little chili oil, one tablespoon, because fat carries flavor, and this fat's already got a ton of flavor in it. And that's it. So now we've kind of got that initial chop. We're going to take it a little further and see it start to form into like a ground meat mixture. Now we've got most of the chop done, so we're kind of working our way into that primary bind where this is going to start to get stickier and stickier. Just a little bit more on this right here. So probably less than a minute total processing time. You can see how it's all kind of holding together in one big piece now. 
Even if I hold it from the top, it takes a while for it to kind of fall apart. There we go. That's good texture. That's a sausage texture. And we talk about that sausage texture because I want these meatballs to hold together kind of like a sausage does. Um, one of the other things that's really going to help us out is if we form this while it's cold. And while it is pretty cold right now, the more we work it, the warmer it gets. So I'm just going to throw this into the fridge for the next like 20 to 30 minutes to chill out. Now before we jump into forming our meatballs, we want to get the grill fired up. And today we're cooking on the Napoleon Phantom 500. Now this is a gas grill, but we're going to be cooking almost entirely over charcoal today. I've got the charcoal basket loaded up inside the Napoleon. We're just going to use the gas to get this charcoal started. So high heat right underneath our lump charcoal. And as that kind of takes and catches and starts to go on its own, we'll just completely shut off the gas. So now we're ready to scale out these meatballs. You can go one ounce, one and a half ounce, just depends on what size you want to do. Um, I like that one to one and a half ounce range for what we're doing today. This is a great kind of snack size. Uh, at an ounce and a half, you could eat a couple of these and a little lettuce wrap and it's a, a pretty nice fit. And for what we're doing today, we should be able to crank out a, about a baker's dozen of these meatballs at an ounce and a half. Now we've got these scaled out, I want to get them skewered up. I'm going to put a, just a little bit of duck fat on my hands here. Any kind of spray fat will work that'll kind of smooth that surface out. And then I'm going to thread them right through a double prong skewer. Like I said, a baker's dozen. We got 13 of these guys here, but what I'd recommend you doing, especially like the first time that you knock out this recipe, is take that 13th meatball and heat it up in a skillet, cook it through and taste it so you can decide if there's any adjustments you want to make as far as the seasonings go. And then you've still got a dozen meatballs, which is a nice round number. You know, if you're doing like two servings each, that's, or two meatballs per serving, I'm gonna give you a good six servings. And you've got a good idea of what that flavor profile is gonna look like. So we got this space just right so that we can get color around all sides. These are ready to go on the grill, but before we do that, we've got a couple more things to put together here. So we wanna serve our meatballs with a little white rice. Uh, we're going to do that inside of a lettuce wrap today. We want to get this rice going. I've got some sushi rice here that's been rinsed several times. I'm going to add two parts water to one part rice and just season it up a little bit. A little bit of salt there. I'm going to throw some chili oil in here as well. And then I've got these little seaweed snacks. These are teriyaki flavored seaweed snacks, which are you know, great for, for snacking on. Also great for adding a little something extra to your rice. All right, so we'll just throw the lid on it. When it comes to cooking rice, my favorite way to do it is in a rice cooker. We also need a sauce that's gonna go on the meatballs and in the rice, and we're gonna doctor this up using a few different existing sauces. So we're starting with the Bachan's Yuzu, which is also in the meatball itself. I'm gonna do six parts of the Bachan's. We're gonna do six parts ketchup as well. And today, just to add a little extra heat and flavor, we're doing the uh, smoke and ghost ketchup but you could totally just use a regular ketchup um, and get similar results. So equal parts on Bachan's and Smoke and Ghost ketchup. And then we're gonna add one part Worcestershire sauce and specifically today we're using the Baron Burton's W sauce, the Fireshire, which is just, again, a little bit more heat. So you can do all of this more mild, um, with a similar sauce without the heat. But I'm looking for a little bit of heat behind this to balance out the sweetness and the saltiness. I'm gonna start the sauce off on the side burner just to bring this up to temperature. It'll thicken a little bit, but warming this up is gonna let all those flavors kind of meld together and reducing it down will help it coat the meatballs later on. Meatballs going over the charcoal now. 
The grill is super hot. It's about 600 degrees inside here. I'm gonna leave the door open for now to get the color that we want. Once we've got all the color we want, if we need to raise the internal temperature, we move it to the indirect side of the grill and close the door. If these are gonna go quick on getting that color, we're gonna get, embrace the char on this. As soon as those are able to release, you can roll them over, we'll get some color on the opposite side and then we'll move them to finish indirect. So we've got the char that we came for, but the internal's got about 60 degrees to go. We're looking for about 155 to finish these off. So that means time to move these indirect. Let them finish over here on the cool side of the grill where there's no direct heat underneath. We can close this up and trap all that heat in there to raise the internal. Well, it hasn't taken long, but two of the three of our skewers are, have come up to temp 155 to 160. I'm gonna hit these with a little bit of lime juice before we get them off of here. And then that last one just needs a couple more minutes to get there. Now that all the meatballs have come off, we're gonna throw these in a bowl, we get them coated in our sauce. It's reduced down just a little bit on the side burner. Just give them a gentle toss in the sauce. Just get that little sticky finish on the surface. Salty, sweet, and spicy. Rice is done cooking, get that fluffed up, and we'll put together the finished product here. We've got some butter lettuce here. I'm gonna throw down a little bit of rice. Just spoon a little bit of our sauce over the rice as well. A couple of our Japanese chicken meatballs. Some green onion on top. Like those greens that we used the whites and actually went into the chicken meatball the greens go on top and then finally i've got this is just kind of fun a little crunchy a little condiment we've got some wasabi peas just crush those right on top and let them be kind of like a little spicy crouton that's it that's the look let's have a taste mmm Meatball, so tender, but fantastic crunch and char on the outside. Still juicy in the middle. Love that sticky sauce on the outside. Picking up a little bit of that seaweed flavor coming out of our white rice. And then the crunch and the wasabi. There's just a little bit of heat to this, but it eats real nice. Um. What a fun presentation. Walk around, Japanese chicken meatballs wrapped up in your lettuce. You got your rice. This is on the go snack food. Maybe a little bit messy, but the flavor's worth it. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.